Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everyone, based on your respective time zones. Apache Spark meets FEPS, Federal Information Processing Standards. A bit about me, I'm Scrap Codes on Twitter and GitHub. And uh, my key, key focus areas in Apache Spark are structured streaming and Spark on Kubernetes. And uh, I'm also part of uh, Kubernetes release team for 1.20. Um, my group, uh, Kodai, which is Center for Open Source Data and AI Technologies, we are focused on we are focused on open source, uh, and uh, we are a group of like 40 plus uh, developers, and. Um, some of us work on uh, the key projects which are part of any typical uh, machine learning pipeline. For example, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Apache Spark, Scikit, and so on. <clears throat> the question, why do we need encryption for big data processing engines like Apache Spark? We enterprises are handling confidential data, be it sensitive private personal information and uh, the government bodies, uh, large enterprises like banks, healthcare industry, telecommunication sector. Today, all of them have to, com have to comply with some kind of regulation or compliance, for example, GDPR or CCPA. Why do certain enterprises build their own solution rather than license from others? So this question uh, shows the importance of uh, how important it is to comply with these compliance. The risk of not complying and loss of users' personal data can have way more serious repercussions in the form of lawsuits than um, you know, the expense incurred in the achieving those compliance. So many enterprises go all the way um, in the investments to, for example, men, a general solution taken is you know, have a cloud VPN. In some cases, on-prem deployment and even up to the point of build my own solutions using a, you know open source stack and come up with their own as a service. As an example, as of today, many organizations have some form of Spark as a service implementation of their own, which of course they could have licensed. Can we still use the convenience of a cloud platform while we handle sensitive data? So yes, and uh, a bit about FIPS, Federal Information Processing, Processing Standards, which are uh, you know, issued or standardized, announced by NIST, National Institutes of Standards and Technologies, which is a US government agency and uh, FIPS is one such standard which gives guidance on uh, the encryp encryption algorithms and, uh, and the key sizes which are secure enough for uh, large enterprises. Bring your own key and FIPS standard of encryption. The combination of this achieves the highest level of uh, uh, security. What is bring your own key? It is that only the user controls the keys used to encrypt the data. Loss of keys renders the data that is encrypted inaccessible even to the cloud provider. So how this happens? The keys are stored in the most secure computing environment, you know, FIPS certified cloud HSM, which is like a dedicated hardware for storing uh, keys 
um, ensures that uh, they are stored in a tamper-proof way. And, uh, and any, any uh, loss of keys simply means uh, the data is inaccessible for the, uh, both for the user and the cloud provider. And since the data is encrypted by the user provided keys, the cloud providers in themselves cannot access the data. We'll cover this concept in a brief envelope encryption. So this is what works underneath any bring your own key implementation today. This diagrams looks familiar to all of us. There is an unencrypted data, data encryption key, and we apply AES algorithm and we get encrypted data. What is special here is that this encrypted data and the data encryption key, which was used to encrypt that data are both encrypted. The key itself is encrypted, which is called wrapping, wrapping of the key. And the, and the key used to wrap the, use, uh, the encrypting DEK, uh, data encryption key, is the user provided key. And that key stays safe in a cloud HSM and never leaves that system. The benefit of this is that when encrypted data and wrapped DK are stored at rest in any storage, no one can access the data unless they have access to the root key, which are uh, protected in a, in a uh, secure cloud HSM instance. So we, we discussed the cloud provider cannot use the data and if the keys are lost, the data becomes permanently inaccessible. Keys are protected inside a physical hardware that is cloud SSM, which are FIPS level four certified, which is like highest level of uh, security certification in the FIPS standard. Now in a typical deployment, there is an OpenShift cluster or you know Kubernetes cluster. There are Apache Spark uh, nodes, and and each node has either a driver or an executor running on them. There is a cloud object storage and a key management service. A key management service is an interface to access the user key. The service it provides are, for example, wrapping a DEK and unwrapping a DEK. Wrapping is encrypting the key with the user provided key and unwrapping is reversing that. So in this case, OpenShift has an uh, integration for uh, uh, you know, bring your own key and so does cloud object storage. How they do it? that all of their internal communication between the nodes happen over SSL and the keys per, uh, used to perform that SSL communication is um, accessed through the key management service by these get wrapped DEK requests. In this way, the data that flows even on the network or is uh, stored at rest, all are encrypted through the user provided keys. Similarly, even the cloud object storage uses this uh, uh, key management service to wrap the uh, data encryption key. In this way, uh, the data is not accessible even to the cloud provider. When we say an application is FIPS compliant or a system is FIPS compliant or a library is FIPS compliant, what does it mean? It means the software is using communication and storing data at rest. And the encryption uh, algorithms used 
are approved by FIP standard as stated in the as stated by the NIST. FIPS mode allows only a subset of encryption algorithm. Let's take a case in point. For example, OpenSSL, which has a FIPS compliant mode and also a default mode. So this example, I have listed all the uh, en encryption ciphers which supports uh, key exchanges RSA and uh, this includes even those which are weaker uh, encryption algorithm, for example, null SHA, null MD5, and so on. The same OpenSSL, which is in FIPS mode, when we do version, we get FIPS. And when I list uh, ciphers with FIPS, uh, I get a subset of what we saw on the previous screen. The, the starting from 3DES from on the bottom up to the AES 256 GCM, you know, SHA-384 cipher, all of these are supported by the FIPS standard and are pretty strong uh, encryption algorithms. A smaller uh, key size, for example, AES-128 is probably more performant in terms of processing speeds, but is weaker in, in the encryption strength. And uh, similarly, AES-256 would be the strongest here. <clears throat> Let's take Java for ex uh, as a as an example of FIPS compliance. In Java or a JDK, the compliance is achieved by configuration of security policies. Oracle offers its guidance. I have the link provided if you want to check it out. And they list the set of uh, uh, algorithms or encryption ciphers and key strengths which are, which are supported or uh, which are allowed, approved by the FIPS standard. Similarly, IBM SDK also has a security you know, policy configuration. Not only that, they also provide specific security providers, Java security providers, which are uh, uh, validated for uh, by the FIPS compliance, like they have a CMVP program, they're validated. <clears throat> So coming to Spark security has four parts, authentication, IO encryption for storage, network encryption, you know, and uh, web interface where we see the Spark UI has an SSL support. How we make uh, Spark FIPS compliant? First step is, to make the underlying operating system stack FIPS compliant. Then comes the libraries that Spark depends on, also FIPS compliant. More specifically, the libraries which provide encryption FIPS compliant. For example, OpenSSL, JDK. JDK, as we discussed on the previous slide, they have security policies and can be configured to achieve the compliance. Then we configure the Spark itself to use the compliant algorithms over the uncompliant ones. We optionally uh, are, can use a stronger um, you know, PKCS11 provider and see how we configure that. PKCS11 has, PKCS has an, is just an API interface to, uh, for encryption which is further, which is implemented, which has implementation in open source. And also many hardware accelerators provide libraries, which are uh, PKCS11 uh, uh, API, which have PKCS11 compliant APIs. So lastly, we'll get back to our OpenShift and uh, bring your own key and how this achieves the uh, 
security even on cloud. So first step, making the operating system FIPS compliant. You know, unless the OS itself provides the compliance mode, it can be very difficult to set up. For example, like in previous slide, OpenSSL has both FIPS mode and uh, the default mode. One would have to compile a library with FIPS flag on to get the FIPS uh, version of it. And similarly, when a number of libraries are used, for example, one maybe uses Mozilla NSS library or OpenSSL libraries, and, and there are a number of them. Operating system itself uses a lot of uh, communication, which needs to be encrypted as well. So unless the operating system offers a compliant version, it's very, it can be very, very difficult to set up. So I am personally aware of Red Hat, which has a compliant mode, instruction is available. And I have, uh, I'm also aware about Ubuntu, which also has a, you know, option for a paid version, which, which has a FIPS mode. This is an example of uh, uh, setting up a PKCS 11 uh, provider in the Mozilla. And uh, you know, you provide a P, you know, provide an NSS uh, configuration and uh, uh, set up the provider in the java.security file. Like in this example, I have configured it the down under. The order is also very important as the algorithms are searched in this order, one, two, and three, like that. So we already saw this. Oracle offers the uh, guidance on this and so does IBM JDK. And uh, both of them have a uh, common in this, uh, and their uh, setup that we need to set up their security policy files to use the right algorithms, approved algorithms, or providers for that matter. FIPS compliant uh, for Spark. This is a configuration example and which uh, I have used pretty good, uh, very good key strengths and uh, use the secure random as PKCS 11 since the JDK is configured to use PKCS 11, we can use them in Spark as well. Underneath, Spark uses uh, uh, either the OpenSSL library as uh, uh, provided by the operating system, or it uses the Java version of these encryption algorithms or ciphers. So we need to make sure both of them are also FIPS compliant. Coming back to reviewing our uh, OpenShift cluster. So after, uh, what if all of this setup is already provided? For example, an OpenShift, which is compliant, FIPS compliant, already makes sure that operating system is compliant and all the network communication and storage data at rest is also encrypted and with the compliant approved, uh, FIPS approved algorithms. So when any application, this is Spark as an example, it's just an example. Any application uh, running over OpenShift can leverage these, uh, uh, and leverage the compliance much easily or can benefit from the, uh, the setup much easily than going for their own setup as we just saw, which can be pretty difficult. So this integrate, this uh, inbuilt, uh, um, bring your own key integration in OpenShift uh, makes it uh, very convenient to 
uh, achieve uh, encryption or to achieve uh, FIPS compliance. And uh, very strong security. Processing big data, we covered processing big data on hybrid cloud, why, how we can uh, be still compliant and use the hybrid benefit of hybrid cloud, the cost factor and the time factor. We also, we, we covered that. For example, um, the cost incurred in not complying with GDPR can be very, very high than uh, the cost incurred in complying with it you know, the extra uh, computing power or whatever. Cloud brings in the, the, the uh, convenience of having uh, uh, ready to use solution out of the box. We also saw how bring your own key and envelope encryption, encryption uh, ensures only the user has the access to the data or user controls the access to the data. We also saw how FIPS uh, compliance can be achieved. And uh, we also talked about uh, validation, about uh, FIPS validation, which is a different subject. As a matter of fact, OpenShift integrates both being your own key and FIPS compliant. Any application running on top of it leverages it. So these are the links, feel free to check out about FIPS compliance, you know, OpenShift, Pachispath, and uh, down this is my blog, uh, which has more details on how we achieve, how Spark achieves uh, uh, FIPS that we briefly saw in my presentation. Thank you, I'm open to questions now.